What's going on, everybody? How you doing today? So, welcome to a very, very bright day. But it should be bright. It should be dark. For what I'm about to tell you, this story is crazy. Now, this is the story of the entity. Now, the entity was a movie in 1982 starring Barbara Hershey. What happened to you guys last night, anyway? I was attacked. Is this the first time something like this has ever happened? No. Things have come to me. In the night. But it's based on a real life story. Now, of course, it's a haunting. It's a ghost story. Is it real? Is it memorized? I don't know. I have a hard time believing certain things, but the story is crazy. We're going to walk over to the house. I'm going to show you it. I'm going to tell you what supposedly happened here. See what we can see of the house. But this is the real life entity house. So the movie was based on this house. This is where it actually happened. All the stuff that I'm about to tell you that went down happened in this house right over here. And it's weird. It, it's, it's a little graphic too. So if you can't handle that sort of thing, you can handle it. You can handle it. All right, so as we walk toward the house, I'm gonna tell you what happened here. There's a woman named Doris Byther. This is Braddock Drive here in Culver City. And she lived in a house here with her three kids. But one day she was in a bookstore, and not too far from here actually, and she overheard a couple of paranormal investigators talking about paranormal stuff. So she walked up to them and said she was having some paranormal problems of her own, a very particular one. So the two paranormal investigators went to her house. Now the home was not very well kept, almost kind of in squalor, so to speak. and. She didn't get along with her sons. I believe she had three, no, she had four kids. That's right, now I'm thinking she had four kids. She had three boys, that's right, because she didn't get along with any of the boys, but she got along with a little girl, who was the youngest, I believe. And she had a troubled past, this woman. She was abused by her parents, as well as various romantic, um, you know, lovers, to use a word that's creepy, but yeah. So it was this trauma that kind of bled into her relationship with her sons. And the house had been condemned twice by this point. But Doris said that these ghosts were malicious. She said that she bumped into them all the time and that they were sexually assaulting her. She said that one of the children who claimed to have seen it called the ghost Mr. Who's It. Now, the two paranormal investigators did have a sense of pressure in their ears while inside the house, they said. But nothing very unusual. But if not for the reports of the ghost sightings from the kids, the other family members who had been in the home, they probably would have disbelieved her. But there was something else. She had bruises on her body that seemed to match her story that some ghosts were holding her down while they assaulted her. So they kind of were like, what? That's a little odd. I'm just checking out my car down the street, which is illegally parked, as always. So, they came back to the house again. And they returned with photographers and called in other investigators to help. They stood in her small bedroom and they asked her to summon the ghost. And it's at this point where they said they saw lights popping up in the room and a green mist that formed the body of a man. The house is right there. I'm going to get you a better shot because of the stupid sun. That's the house. Let's keep walking as I tell the story and flip around so we can get a good shot of it. Now, of course, the only thing the investigators caught was on, like on film was an orb that appeared to arc over Doris. Now, another way that they said there was a way to get the ghost to come, this is what the teenage boy, one of her teenage sons said, was to play Black Sabbath and Uriah Heep. Songs about the devil, and that would summon the ghosts to that house right there. Now, some speculate that the because the ghosts seemed most active when Doris was present, and even more so when she was drunk, that the spirits were attached to her and not the home. Eventually, she moved to Carson, which is down by San Pedro, above San Pedro Torrance area, which is far, you know, pretty, pretty good distance from here. And the house, nothing ever ever happened in the house again. But she claimed that the ghosts followed her. But according to her son, she died at the age of 58 in 1999. Why do I see and feel these things? 
Some things are more terrible than other things. And he felt like a man. A big man. And there's also rumors that a, a woman came to uh, the house one time, knocked on the door while Doris was living here, warned her that there was an evil presence in the house. But we don't know if that's really true or not. But there it is. That's the famous entity house right there. So those real life hauntings, look at this. I mean, it's just a normal little nice house. That sun, I'm telling you, I mean, it's a, it's a, look at the palm trees, come on. It's a gorgeous little California bungalow. But what she claimed happened in there was pretty crazy. Being sexually assaulted by ghosts. That's, that's a wild tale. Is it true? I don't know. But there's the house right there. I'm gonna walk right by the house right now. A little bit closer. That's the entity house. And that's about all I can tell you about this house, this spirit, and Doris. I don't know. Make your own decisions. All right, so that's the story of Doris Pyther and the real life entity house. Did something happen there? I don't know. I'm a, I'm a skeptic. I mean, there's alcohol involved too when she was drunk a lot. But still, it's an interesting story. They made a movie about it, so it has to be real, right? I don't know. Maybe it's real. Maybe it's not. Maybe the video's over. My name is Scott. I got bars. Well, for real, Doris, rest in peace. Uh, seems like she had a tough life and some sad, uh, I don't know, some weird experiences she had, but seems like she had a tough life. So rest in peace, Doris. All right, peace. Will you appear to us now?